Today, we're taking a look at this custom ESP32 board I designed for an automated plant watering system. Previously, I've shown you how I designed the schematic and the PCB. To reiterate, it's got LiPo charging circuit using TP4056, a small OLED display to show some data for the sensors that are on board. I have two connectors for water pumps, so this can feed two plants. It's got two moisture sensors for sensing the level of water that's present in soil. A additional sensor, I have a pressure sensor which does temperature as well. So this is to monitor the ambient environment. I should have added a moisture sensor as well, but we can improve that design as we iterate this board. Now the board has just arrived and I'm excited to see everything works as planned. So let's quickly build this board. But before we do that, a huge thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and bringing this design to life for me. If you need high quality PCB manufacturing and assembly, check them out, more on that later. I have to say PCBWay did an excellent job manufacturing this board. The salt screen is crisp, the solder mask looks clean and everything lines up perfectly. They offer PCB prototyping, assembly and even CNC machining. So whether you're making a simple breakout board or a very complex design, sort of like this but maybe a little bit more complicated, check them out with the link below. If you place an order with my link, you get a bit of a discount and I get a bit of a kickback so works out. So again, a huge thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and making this project possible. For now, let's quickly go over the design. At the heart of the board is an ESP32 C6 providing Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. We've got a LiPo charging circuit over here. So this system can run wirelessly as well. You can see I've got a small battery connected at the moment, but ideally we would have a larger LiPo battery on this. The OLED display lets us show real-time sensor data so we can show the temperature, moisture levels, whether the motors are on or not, and anything else we may need to show. And this little guy over here is the pressure sensor with a included temperature sensor. So I mainly included this just to play around with the pressure sensor, but it's useful for monitoring the temperature. I designed this board in KiCad, and the goal was to create a compact all-in-one system that's easy to integrate into a plant watering setup. Nice, the moisture sensor is working, as you can see on the screen now. This is the serial monitor from my PCB. You can see I've got moisture levels for the two sensors on the board. I've got temperature and pressure coming from the pressure sensor and just displaying the status of the motor. At the moment, the moisture sensor is in air. So the status for the motor is on and the moisture sensor is reading 21%. Now, if I dip this sensor into a cup of water, you can see that the moisture sensor level has gone up to 99% and the motor has turned off. So that's with this board working here at the moment. So the code in Arduino is very simple. What we are doing is setting up the pins where the moisture sensor is connected as inputs. Then for the moisture sensor itself, we are basically doing a analog read on the two channels and then printing the moisture level directly to the serial monitor which you can see down here. So you got 225 for basically that's moisture sensor level one. And then the bottom one is moisture sensor two, which is not connected at the moment. And if I dip the sensor into the water again, you can see that the moisture level or the analog reading goes down. So it's gone down to 961 from 2251. What I need to do to turn that into a percentage is basically I have written this function over here which maps the minimum moisture value which we have as roughly 2200 and the maximum moisture value which we have as roughly 928 as you just saw and we are mapping that 
from 100 to 0. And this is a built-in function in the Arduino IDE, which we are using. And then we're returning a percentage back to the main loop over here. And then we are printing that to the serial monitor, which is the two values that you see over here. For turning the motor on and off, the code is even simpler. We basically set the motor control pin as a digital output, which we have here. So we got pump one and pump two. I have defined the pin numbers just above the setup code. So you can see pump one is connected on pin two, pump two is connected on pin three. So set them as outputs. And in the while loop, I've got some very basic code. If the moisture percent falls below 40%, the motor goes on. And if the moisture goes above 60%, the motor goes off. So I'm writing that to the serial monitor. And I'm also setting the pin which goes to the motor controller. The motor controller is just a basic transistor circuit with a diode to protect from back EMF. Unfortunately, I couldn't include the diode and the transistor onto my PCB as it was putting the cost bracket of the PCB into the next band and I couldn't afford to build it. So the diode and the transistor are external for the time being. So far, everything looks great. We've got all our sensors and our motor control working. The regulators work fine, the battery charging works fine. The next step, as I went through before, is to continue writing the firmware for this board and basically add some Wi-Fi capability as well. So if you want to see that, make sure to subscribe, press the like button and let me know in the comments if you think we should be adding more hardware features as well to this project so that we can keep developing the PCB further. What I would love to do, maybe with some Bluetooth connectivity, is maybe make a mobile app for remote monitoring, but I'd love to hear your ideas. I want to focus on hardware as much as possible, but then again, I want to do some embedded firmware as well. So I'd love to hear your ideas on where to take this further. So one thing I sort of glossed over when I went through this video was installing the ESP32 libraries in Arduino. So I know not everyone will know how to do this. So what I'm going to do is just quickly show you that before we close this video. In order to make ESP32s work on Arduino, you firstly need to go to the board manager, which is on the left hand side over here. So if you go to tools, then click on board and board manager over here, you basically get a link here as well. Then you can search for ESP32 and you can see I have got Arduino ESP32 board already installed. You'd probably have a install option over here. And then the second board manager tool is the ESP32 by Espressive Systems. So I've installed both of them. For my board, I'm using ESP32 C6 Dev module. There are a bunch of options on here that you can use. So if you click on the module and select other board and port, you can search for your ESP version and to see if it actually comes up on here. So you can see I've typed in C6 and there are a bunch of options for ESP32 C6. You need to make sure you get the right board. Um, some boards are different and they may not work. I think if I try any of these, it, my board will probably program up but then there are some options on here that you need to change. So you can see the options that I have at the moment is ESP32C6 dev module. The COM port will change depending on what you have connected. You need to make sure you turn on ear. You need to make sure that you turn on USB CDC and mark that as enabled. Sometimes it's disabled as a default and basically just copy these options that are over here. I've not had any issues with these settings so far. Now for the Adafruit libraries, it's slightly different. You want to go to your library manager and then in the library manager, you want to search for Adafruit. Now we are using um, Adafruit BMP library Adafruit GFX library and Adafruit SSD1306 library. So SSD1306 is the driver that's inside of a display module. The BMP3XX is the pressure module or the pressure sensor module. And the GFX library gives you some of the test patterns and things like that. So you want to go in here, search for Adafruit and install this library, install this SSD1306 library and any others that you might want to try and use. So once that's installed, if you go into file and examples, this will give you a bunch of examples that you can use from the custom libraries that we just installed. So we have a Adafruit BMP3 XX library for like a simple test and multi, I think if you've got multiple sensors on there, I've not basically gone through these libraries at the moment, but yeah, you've got a bunch of libraries that you can use to test your system. I highly recommend it if you're new to coding and you want to get something working fast. Basically, you can borrow a lot of code from here 
and cut and paste into your own project to get things working relatively quickly. Obviously, there might be teething issues that you need to sort out. So that's how you kind of install the libraries on Arduino and how to make my board automated plan altering system work with Arduino IDE and work with ESP32s in general. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.